Well, Lydia, thanks so much for joining me today to have this conversation. I um, know that we share a really a deep passion for design thinking and human-centered design when approaching new technologies and innovations. And um, I think it's fascinating to look back on the career you've had, both in the imaging space, in the diagnostic space, and now coming to Pfizer. And, and I'm curious if you could maybe start off by saying, how have you thought differently maybe about, or, or similarly, about the approaches to patient-centric um, innovations, toolings, et cetera, to address things like gaps in care uh, and the move to value-based care uh, in some of these other industries versus now taking that mandate over to Pfizer? Yeah. So, you know, I, I've had the fortune of um, serving, you know, in different sectors of healthcare. Um, you know, the conversations that we're having today about population health and value-based care and even precision medicine, right, as we're thinking about that, those, we've, we had that experience, we lived through that in imaging and in diagnostics. And so, you know, as we, as I came over, that was actually part of the reason why I joined Pfizer, because, you know, our purpose, our breakthroughs that change patients' lives. To live that purpose, we, we really believe that we have to drive scientific, commercial, and digital innovation. And, and so, you know, part of the, the excitement of me coming to Pfizer is that we have so much opportunity in pharma to drive deeper engagement, to really connect with patients and the physicians and the payers and IDNs in a way that you know, is really gonna drive better outcomes. Because at the end of the day, it is about the patient and it is about not just the patient and coordinating their care, but also how do we drive better measurable outcomes, right? Activity is not enough. It's not enough, enough to order that procedure or you know, prescribe that medication anymore. You gotta show that it's having the intended outcome. And that's part of what I'm bringing because we dealt with that in diagnostics and in radiology. You know, uh, we had prior authorization and all these uh, requirements much earlier than, and now we're having that conversation here. So that's part of what I'm bringing to Pfizer is driving that commercial innovation scientific innovation and digital innovation to really drive those better outcomes. And when you're thinking about bringing that into a place like Pfizer, are there new tools, new methodologies, new ways of thinking that we need to bring to bear to actually make this kind of change, or, or is it sort of business as usual? No, I, you know, that's an interesting question because, you know, as, you know, in, the, in one of the prior panels, right, um, pharma has the ability to invest and they've invested in technology. One of the nice you know, surprises as I came in to do the usual assessment that I do when I join a company, it wasn't about the technology. We're leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence, and we've invested in you know, some pretty you know, big data platforms. It was really more about what I would say a couple things. One is in pharma, we, you know, there's a vertical orientation, brands and medicines. And what we're doing is really thinking, we need to inject more of horizontal thinking. The patient's mm. journey is not a vertical journey. The patient's journey is a horizontal journey, and it happens over time. So part of it is, how do we think more horizontally, and then really coordinate and do our part in, in an ecosystem? We have to think of healthcare as an ecosystem. And there's very stakeholders that are involved in the care of the patient. So the name of the game is gonna be care coordination, right? So that's one aspect. The other one is the mindset. The mindset that, you know, um, ha that engagement, it's about an experience. And so you really have to, you know, you mentioned design thinking. I'm a, I'm a practitioner of design thinking, and I tell my team, you know, the first question we will ask, we're not gonna talk about a technology. I don't wanna hear, you know, let's use blockchain, let's use machine learning, let's use AI. The first question I will ask is, what experience are we trying to create? The second question, what outcomes are we trying to achieve? And when we understand that, then we can figure out, is it a mobility solution? Is it a, you know, is it going to be more of an alert? Is it a, a reminder? Or is it a more sophisticated technology? But only then do we figure that out. So it's really mindset and that horizontal kind of thinking. And, and to get that horizontal thinking, you know, that, that can sometimes be a challenge, right? Because that's not the way we've traditionally worked. And that's, um, something that maybe comes a little bit more naturally for companies that have grown up in a digital world, 
um, who, who have had the benefit of sort of this thinking uh, of connectivity from, from, the, from the, their inception. Um, but at some big companies that maybe were not born digital, uh, that's a change, that's a transition, and that is not something that can be done in a single office of innovation, right? That is something that needs to take place at a company-wide scale. I know that's a, uh, a, a challenge for, for many uh, uh, companies around the room here. Uh, talk to me about what that's like to get the right stakeholders at the table and to do that kind of change, that kind of change in mindset uh, at, at a company um, that, that doesn't necessarily have that digital legacy. Yep. And you know, I always like to say there's two kinds of companies, as, as you know, those that are born digital and those that are trying to become digital. Right. If you're older than 20 years old, you're in the second camp. And so when you think about that, right, it's, it really is, you know, healthcare is a team sport. And it's a team sport because there's different stakeholders, you know, from research like, you know, the NSF, to companies that are developing uh, to, you know, new medicines or, or new medical devices, to the services, to you know, hospitals and providers right, that, are, that are coordinating the care for that patient. And, and you have the payers and regulators, so it is very much you know, a number of different stakeholders. You know, what has worked in the, you know, in the places where I've been is number one, you do need to put the patient at the center. I know it sounds very fundamental, but we get caught up in what it is that we do. And so we have to, you know, really put the patient at the center, right? Um, the second thing is that, again, it comes back to what are the outcomes that we're trying to achieve? And we have to really uh, define those outcomes and they need to be measurable. What gets measured gets done, right? So yeah. that's the second piece. And then the third piece is you gotta align the incentives. And the incentives should be aligned to the value that is being created. And the third one is harder to do because we have, you know, we are by definition healthcare, while it's an ecosystem, it's not until relatively recently that we've started to really drive, you know, some more standards of, for example, of data exchange. And, you know, being able to see that complete view of the patient. Um, and, and so the good news is that we're really, the momentum is going that way. I think you know, we now have the technologies available to bring data sets together and to be able to look at the view of that patient. And furthermore, we have more and more the possibility to exchange that information. Whether you know, I've worked with Apple to, you know, to include our data and our services in the, in the Apple health record, right? We've worked with all the EHRs. And so I think we need to be open-minded to share our information Again, do it responsibly, do it in a in protected way and ensure the privacy of the patient. But I think that's part of what we all need to do. And I think the hardest one is going to be aligning the incentives. Uh, but it is something that we absolutely have to do. So, so if we're going to get those incentives aligned, if we're going to really build this ecosystem here, like you said, we need to change some of the mindsets from working in the silos. But also, we have to have everybody at the table. Do we have all the right players at the table today to make this kind of a change to truly be an ecosystem? More and more, I'm seeing it happen more and more. You know, um, for example, you know, if I look at Pfizer, um, we are working, you're seeing in pharma a couple of groups, just as an example, right, like Transcelerate, where we are coming together across all the different pharma companies and saying, what are the opportunities for us to drive standards in clinical trials, for example, and, and the way that you know, the, we do the filings because you know, it's gonna be the same requirements that the FDA has or you know, the European authorities have or Japan has. So can we come together and drive those standards and commit to those standards? So I am seeing more. I do think the right people are at the table. I think from a, from a mindset perspective is seeing ourselves as partners rather than adversaries. I think it's also part of you know, what I'm seeing changing um, you know, again, having been in radiology and having been in diagnostics, we worked very closely with every health, you know, with every health plan. We worked very closely with IDNs, and so, and I'm seeing that more and more in the pharma. And I think it's that's going to be part of the of the conversation. And it's and it really is, you know, government. It's going to be, you know, the, the industry. It's going to be, you know, technology companies and innovators that can help us tie it together. Um, so I, I do. I am seeing more and more that we're working together, and that's really encouraging. 
Absolutely. I've seen that movie before in other, in other <laughs> sectors of healthcare, and it has worked really well. So I'm excited about that. I'm glad to see the movie continuing to play out in other sectors there. I think you know, one of the things that I really wanted to, to get your take on, because I know we're both uh, technology fans at heart, uh, is to think about these new technologies and how you bring them into a sector like healthcare, where sometimes the technology, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, really got in the way and interrupted what should have been uh, a moment of empathetic care between two people. It put a screen in between that connection between that provider and that, uh, and that person who was sick. Um, and I think in every other industry, we've seen technology experiences that have been magical and, and transformative. Uh, and yet, oftentimes, um, we, we've missed the mark in healthcare to really fulfill that digital promise. So I'm wondering if you could talk to me a little bit about how you approach a challenge like bringing a, a new piece of technology into a patient interaction in a way that still privileges that um, human connection and supports, but doesn't get in the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, so one of the, um, so we are very focused on the experience and, you know, certainly creating a Pfizer experience for our patients. You know, we touch hundreds of millions of people around the world every year. And the, what I call the engagement um, varies depending on you know, where they are in their experience and in their life cycle and, and in their condition. You know, what, what we're doing is, again, starting with injecting empathy by doing voice of the customer, by ensuring that we walk in the shoes of that patient, of that doctor, of that IDN, and we're designing our experiences based on that versus us thinking that we know what they want and we know what they need. Mm -hmm. It really is taking that. Um, the other thing that we're doing is, um, so for example, you know, we, we're piloting right now, you know, one of my visions for us is, I wanna have a digital companion with every one of our medicines. And this digital companion varies in terms of level of engagement, but you know, we launched um, a pilot that started in April and it is a digital companion, you know, for, um, and we selected two of our medications. And it's, um, you know, when that patient goes to get their medications at the pharmacy, they get this digital companion, which is a robot, and the robot has uh, a, um, a tablet, and it's been all connected so that the engagement, the data, the conversations are all integrated. And, and so the patient goes home, and this is a digital companion that goes home with them. And you know, what's been really illuminating, because we started this in the middle of April, what's been really illuminating is that we can see what's happening with that patient day in and day out. The conversations that they're having with the robot. Did they take their medication? Did they, um, how are they feeling? We do sentiment analysis, it's all, it's AI driven and all of this is, is integrated and very well, very connected. And then, you know, what's nice about it is that in real time, as the patient is experiencing this day in and day out, a couple of things are happening. One, so for example, if the patient we had, you know, uh, several of the patients didn't take their medication. This, the pharmacy reaches out to them and says, why didn't you take your medication? In one case, it was they had run out of medicine. So the pharmacy was able to immediately, you know, uh, send the medication and the patient had their medication that afternoon. In another instance, the patient hadn't taken their medication you know, the, the pharmacy calls and says, hey, why didn't you take your medication? And the patient says, well, you know, it made me feel, you know, I, it didn't make me feel better, it made me feel worse. So then the physician calls the patient and has a conversation and says, hey, look, we know that this made you feel, th this happens, it's common in the first doses. This is, you know, new treatment, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a new therapy for this patient. So take a couple more doses, you will feel better. So the patient, you know, takes, continues, and starts to feel better, you know, over the next couple of days. The beauty of this is now we really have, not only can we all see what's going on. Now, for Pfizer, we, the information that we get is not identified information. We, we get the experience and we use that for us to design and improve our medications. What's really significant here is that in, in real time, and as that patient is experiencing, that pharmacy and that physician's office and that physician can actually reach out proactively to the patient. And this is, you know, an example of a digital companion. And, you know, the, the patients, um, you know, what's interesting is 
when they, we saw all the, all the patients that are participating, when they are feeling, um, when they're not feeling good, the conversations tend to be longer. So, mm -hmm. you know, 25 minutes, 17 minutes. When they're feeling better, it might be a shorter conversation. It might be five minutes or three minutes. And then we also see, are they looking at the health tips that are being provided? And they're reading the health tips. And the other thing is, you know, it's a, this is their digital companion, so they can name it. They could, and they're really interacting. So we've learned, you know, a lot. And again, this is about something that helps that patient. It's, it's really the visibility that we now have. And this is a pilot, and we're very encouraged by what we're seeing, because to me, this is the definition of personalized care. And this is the definition of us being coordinated and having visibility to what's happening to that patient so that we can take proactive steps, um, you know, particularly to ensure that we coordinate the care of that patient. So that's an example of how we are introducing technology um, but again, it has to really be um, with the patient's care and, and their experience you know, at the center of this. And then the rest of us that provide services or products or support can actually do that now in real time in a coordinated way with the advances of data and technology and digital at you know, enabling that. I, you know, I really love that example of the robot and in particular the conversations that the patient then has with it. It's interesting how we sort of bring this uh, really high tech uh, device and solution with this natural language processing and artificial intelligent machine learning behind it to really um, emulate an old technology, right, which is that conversation right. um, and really be able to keep that going even after someone has left the pharmacy or left the, uh, the bedside. So that's fantastic. Lydia, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. This is really excellent to have your insights here on the stage with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks.